You are listening to God First with Rev. Dr. Nicholas Lowe. Our message is simple. God has a purpose for your life. He has created you on purpose for a purpose. We pray that these podcast episodes, in some small way, can aid in your journey of faith by guiding and inspiring you towards unlocking God's purpose for your life. So about four weeks ago, we began a brand new sermon series on the book of Galatians. And periodically, about once every year, a year and a half, we like to try to cover a book in the Bible, to kind of hone us back in into what the Bible is, and more importantly, to help you understand sometimes what can be difficult to understand, how that Bible relates to you. And so we talked about the book of Galatians the last four weeks because that book, written by St. Paul, who's an apostle. St. Paul, remember all this now, is not a disciple. He was not one of the original 12. He comes much later. And as an apostle, his job is to basically plant churches. He goes around in areas of Asia Minor or Turkey, what we call Turkey today, and in Greece, and basically starts churches, educates the faithful, teaches them about the Christian faith, and then he equips leaders and priests to kind of oversee those churches, and then he leaves. But oftentimes, after he would leave a city like Galatia, which is in Anatolia area of Turkey, once he would leave that area, oftentimes the people would revert back to some old negative habits. And that for sure happens in the book of Galatians. So St. Paul writes to these people, why? Because these Christians who had just become Christians within only a few years after the time of Christ are becoming Christians. There are two sets. There are Jewish Christians, those that were following the Old Testament law. And then there were what they call Gentile Christians. These are Christians who are non-Jewish. It's very important to remember that. And so sometimes those Jewish Christians, they call them Judaizers, would come into the city of Galatia. And they would basically say to these Gentile Christians, these non-Jewish Christians, welcome to the Christian faith. It's great to have you part of our Christian church, but you're you're not quite there yet. If you truly want to be a Christian, you have to follow this one law that's mentioned in the Old Testament. You're not quite measuring up, so you have to follow this one act. And many of them were succumbing to this. And so St. Paul writes an epistle. An epistle means a letter that is supposed to be read in public to all the people. And basically he says, don't get caught up in the old law. Yes, the old law, there's a fulfillment of that in the new law, Jesus Christ. But that one act is not about going to make you get closer to Christ. In other words, Christianity is not a performance-based faith. It's a faith that it's Christ's performance in your own walk of faith. And so last week we talked a little bit about, in chapter 3, about grace. And then today, St. Paul kind of shifts the conversation from talking about grace. This is very important, very powerful for you all. So listen up to this. From grace to who you are now and whose you are. In other words, who you are now as a Christian and also number two is who you are now part of. So let's pick it up. We're on page 254 of our yellow Bibles. Open up um, your Bibles with me. Let's read it along together. We're going to be looking at chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 3. So we're on page 254. Let's read this together if we can. Verse 3, it says this. In the same way, we too were slaves of the ruling spirits of the universe before we reached spiritual maturity. In other words, we were living in the past, living in the old ways. But when the right time had come, God sent his son, Jesus. Powerful. He came as the son of a human mother. And he lived under this Jewish law. And then a powerful word, to redeem us. The word redeem means to liberate you, so that you would no longer become slaves, but you would become God's sons and daughters. It continues, to show you that you are his sons, God put his spirit of his son into your heart. Each and every one of us, friends, have the spirit of God, not in some far away thing, but that the spirit of God, the pneuma, is in you. It's in your soul. It's in our hearts and the spirit who cries out, Father, Father, so that you are no longer a slave, 
but you are a son of God. And since you are his son, listen to this great promise. God will give you all that he has for his children, his sons, his daughters. For the people of Galatia to hear that they were no longer a slave was unbelievable for them. Because for them, their equation of what their faith was, was that God was far away from them. That God was at a distance from them. That God was just waiting that if you mess up, I'm coming, I'm going to wipe you out. Their version of God was a very far away God. And sometimes, friends, in our own walk of faith, sometimes when things don't go our way, when we are going through a medical crisis, when you may be dealing with a marriage problem, maybe when you're dealing with a concern that you have or a temptation that you're struggling with, sometimes you too, like the people of Galatia, can say, I just feel like I'm a prisoner to this world. I don't feel like there's any hope. God, where are you? Why am I going through all of this? It's amazing, when I was in Kenya, Africa about three years ago on a mission trip, many of you know the story, it was an extraordinary experience for me. Um, the people in this area of Kenya, Africa, had not had a drop of rain in a year. They would have loved to have happened what happened here last night. For one year, they were begging for water. And y'all know the miracle about it, that they came and said to us, if your God is truly the real God, tell him to let it rain. And if it rains, we'll become Christians. And that night, following morning, we prayed, and it was like a movie. Clouds from the left, right, east, west, north, all came, and it rained. And I'm talking, it rained. And many of you that have been part of our church family, you've heard this message before. But what you've never heard before is the, co is the subtext to when they came to us. Because in their mind, the reason why it hadn't rained was either that, not that their God was not able to make it rain. It was because their God was mad at them. That they hadn't prayed hard enough. Or that they hadn't served God long enough. Or that they were just, had done bad, had bad behavior. And as a result, God was going to punish them. But I want you to recognize and understand this important principle, friends. And this is really at the core of the book of Galatians. God didn't come here to enslave you. God came into this world to save you. God didn't come into this world to make you a slave to him. He told you, I want you to be my son. And how you see Jesus and what he did for you will shape the way you relate to Jesus. And how you relate to Jesus, listen to this, will shape how well you emulate Jesus. So how do we receive this new adoption from slave to son? Three ways. One, you're not a slave, you're a son of God. So often in Christian churches, and those that may be watching us online, you might be part of a church just like this. Sometimes we as churches and as Christians, God can seem far from us. Or better yet, we may just do things out of duty as opposed to devotion. Well, I got to go to church. I've been doing it all my life and got to do it. Or better yet, I've got to be part of this ministry at this church. I've got to give this amount of gifts to this church. I've got to do this kind of stuff. Your walk of faith becomes much more of a duty than a devotion. God doesn't need the duties. He doesn't want you to look at him like you're fulfilling some check box on your little big old attendance sheet in heaven. You know, it's amazing when the, in the Bible, in, in the Greek language, it's very powerful how it talks about this. But when Jesus was saying in the Gospel of Mark, all of you children, come to me. Come and be with me. The children were coming to Jesus. Back in those days, for a young Jewish kid to go to another Jewish man and to run, it was not appropriate behavior. You would have to get the blessings of your parents to even go closer. And even in today's world, that whole idea of just going to someone, because keep in mind, at that time, there was no crucifixion. There was no resurrection. 
Christ hadn't performed that many miracles yet. So for him to call all those children, and the Bible says that the children were on him so much that they were hanging around Jesus so much on his arms, on his robe, that the disciples literally have to take him off, take those kids off of Jesus. Talk about a kid magnet. Talk about how amazing Jesus was. That's how he is with you. Because you are a child of Almighty God. You are a son and daughter of God. And God yearns for you. He wants you to come to him. Not because you have to. Don't come to church because you have to. Don't come because I'm going to feel guilty if I don't. That's the Galatia way. That's just doing it because you're doing it out of a duty. You're not a slave. God wants you as his child to be with him. Nothing I enjoy more than on a Friday night, our date nights with Roxanne, to have my kids with me. I love it. She may not like it too much, but we love it together. <laughs> Number two. This is an important one. God doesn't want you to be an employee. He wants you to be his co-worker. St. Paul said it best last week when we were listening to the epistle. It says, you're not a slave anymore. You're a co-worker with God. I was at a restaurant several weeks ago with Roxanne and the kids, and you know, you go to some of these restaurants, and they give these little gadgets that, it's amazing what we as a society have kind of come to, but anyways, they give you these gadgets, and it's got this circle of lights, and whenever you're just sitting there for, I'm telling you, like 10 or 15 minutes, waiting for that circle of lights to start blinking and blinking, and when it blinks, then you know it's your time, because you're going to get a table to be called for you, and we must have been waiting, I'm telling you, for about 30 to 40 minutes. And there was this hostess that was there. God love her. She was there at the little podium right there, and she was just smacking her gum and um, just there, just kind of right there. And we were just looking around. There were tons of people in the waiting area. And then behind us, there must have been about 10 or 15 tables that were all open. And you know how you get at times, you're like, come on now, behave. But there's 10 tables behind you. You know, can't you just let us go through? And anyways... Uh, we must have waited another 30 minutes there, and eventually she just said, number 54, number 54, can y'all come up here? And so we just came up there, we were number 54, and just were very nice as can be. And then I thought to myself, as we were going to sit at our tables, that if you're not part of the family business, you don't really care too much about the business. You don't mind if there's people waiting there in the waiting room and not sitting them down. You just kind of think it's not that big of importance. But if you're part of the family business, and those of you that own businesses and have employees, you can say amen to this. When you got one of your family members there, most of the time, they've got your back. They're doing all that they can to help the family business. We are part of God's family business. And that spirit that God gives us, that spirit that God said that he puts inside of you, his expectation is that you're going to take care of the family business. What does that look like? That when you have a new member in our church, you don't sit and say, well, that's someone else's problem. The hospitality committee, they'll take care of them. No, it becomes my problem. That's my family that's coming here. When we have a ministry going on in our church, we don't think, well, someone else will do that. No big deal. They'll take care of it. No, your mindset switches. I'm not an employee. That's my daddy's business. That's my father's business. God, help me to get involved into the family business. Let me allow your family business to succeed. Something as simple as this, you're walking in the parking lot, you see a little piece of trash on the ground. Ain't my problem, the custodian will take care of it. No, that's your trash. This is your house. This is your family business and we're called to do that. We've got to switch from being an employee like the people of Galatia to the people of Christ today, and that is that it's my family's business. And last one I want you to think about is this. God doesn't want part of your heart. He wants your whole heart. Listen to me when I tell you this, and I'm talking to you as your priest. I love you with all of my heart. You can ask my wife. I wake up, go to bed at night thinking about you and in this church because I know deep down on the inside of me that I'm accountable to God for you and how you walk in your faith I'm responsible for it. And I will tell you this, that some of you are in this church only 70%, only giving Christ 70% of your heart. I'm not talking about physically being here. You're just coming to God whenever you need him, just kind of a random movement that you might do. 
But if you really want to experience a transformational life, you can't go half in to Jesus Christ. You've got to go all in with him. And that means that when you wake up in the morning, God, I'm living for you. I'm not going to give you half of my heart. I'm not just going to thank you when I get that job promotion or the business was doing well or we gathered more money or that when things are going well in my family. No, God, you didn't go cheap on me. I'm not going to go cheap on you. And you have to ask yourself, am I in it to win it? Am I all in with him? I'll leave you with this thought. This thought. When I was growing up, like a lot of young boys, I always wanted to, I always thought that my dad was the strongest man in the world. In fact, I used to compete and fight with my neighbor, his name was Scooter. And I would tell Scooter, my daddy is stronger than your daddy. And he'd say, no Nick, my daddy is stronger than your daddy. And we would go back and forth and we were always competing over this issue of whose daddy is the strongest daddy. And so one time, I must have been, I don't know, seven or eight years old, I was riding my bike, and Scooter came right behind me. He's like, Nick, let's go for a race. I said, hey, let's do it. He came right next to me, and Scooter was a lot taller than me. I was very short, you all know that growing up. And so I got on my bike, and it wasn't one of those fancy bikes that had all the different signs on it. It just was a normal bike, and his though had all. It was like souped up bike, and I always wanted that bike, but couldn't get that bike. So I was just, I was ready to go, and he said go, and I went, man. And we started riding our bikes, and I was going, pedaling, 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 and he was pedaling, and he would take a little bit of lead, then kind of come back, then I would come up, and we would go back and forth, and then we were, I was going so fast that eventually my handlebars were shaking like this, and I just started to panic. I'm like, oh my gosh, this ain't gonna be good, and I'm like, and it's shaking, and I slam on my little pedal, and I'm telling you, that bike went like this. Whoosh, boom. And I tell you, I started to fly. I felt like I was Superman, but I was diving into the gravel street. And I dove right in there. Face was all bloodied up. Arms were all messed up. Knees were all messed up. I was bleeding. I was dazed. And I looked over, just for a second, over at Scooter to see where he was, because I was still trying to win. And I looked over at Scooter, and as I saw Scooter, all I saw was his mouth going <laughs> And he was not looking at me. He was looking at a totally different direction. And so I was like going, what is he looking at? Turn my face, and here comes a $6 million man, my dad, running, running, running. And my dad comes up there, and I, I don't know what happened. I was a little bit dazed, but what it felt like was my dad took with one arm, lifted me up like this, carried me. And I looked back over at Scooter and I went. <laughs> Let me tell you, our daddy is the strongest daddy. And when you fall down in your own life, when you sometimes think that God's not close to you, uh, when you think at times, like the people of Galatia, that your God is far from you, that he's distant from you, let me tell you something. Don't have Scooter's face of what? Look over. God's running at you. He doesn't run from you. He wants to be near you. And my encouragement, my message for all of you today is that when you leave here today, you have this idea, this new vision of who Jesus is in your life. You're not a slave to God. He doesn't need slaves. He needs you to be his son and his daughter. He needs you that every time that you can, when you get up in the morning, God, I'm not going to give you 90% of me today. No, God, I'm giving you all of me today. Why? Because I know that I'm in your family business. That when I see someone new to our church, hey, come on in. I'm so-and-so. Glad that you're here. When I'm seeing a homeless man on the side of the street, that's part of my family business. God, I'm going to take care of these people. That I, that the way that I see him, is going to shape the way in which I relate to him. And if you get the way you can relate to him the right way, let me tell you, you can emulate him in ways that you could never, ever imagine. May the peace and the conquering God, Jesus Christ, may he shower all of you with his love and to challenge you to shift your thinking from a slave to a son. 
You have been listening to God First with Father Nicholas Lowe. Father Nicholas is the priest at St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. For more information about him and his parish, please visit www.stjohnthedivine.com. This has been a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.